our faith rises up, yes. right? And it's like you step in, you literally step into an atmosphere that's charged. Yes. And when you're in the love of God, everything else changes. I mean, everything changes. When you're in His presence, everything changes because you can feel His tangible love. Welcome back to where the fire meets the clouds broadcast. This is Pastor Kathy Coppola, and I am here to bring part two of three keys to walking in victory. Glory be unto God. We're going to finish this message today, and I believe this message is going to be a blessing to you. And uh, the Word of God is alive, it's rich, and it's active, and we are so changed and transformed by His living Word. Amen. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. So I'm going to pray, and uh, we're going to get we're going to get started with this message because I believe God wants to do amazing, transforming things in your life today, in Jesus' name. So Father, I bless them. I bless them that are listening. I thank you. For Father, for your amazing blessings that are falling upon them right now. I thank you, Father God, for the transition. I thank you, Lord, for the shift right now in the atmosphere, Lord. Things are changing. Things are shifting in their life. Father, I just speak that out in the name of Jesus because we have authority to do so. Father, I speak and I declare over them the clarity of the Word of God coming forth today. Father, I speak right now that they recognize their high calling. They recognize that they're more than conquerors and they are victorious in Christ and they will not leave one thing on the table. They're not going to walk away, Lord, and just uh, not accept or embrace everything that you have for them. So I thank you, Lord, that they are full in you, rich and abundant in you. And I bless them, and I thank you for the message. Now, Holy Spirit, come and illuminate my words, and Father, that are your words. And Lord, I thank you for just how the Holy Spirit empowers us. In Jesus' name, amen. So three keys to walking in victory. You're victorious in Christ. Our victory stems from the fact that Christ was already victorious. So because Christ is already victorious, then and and he belong and we belong to him, he lives in us. We're victorious in Christ. You are victorious in Christ no matter what you go through. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater, the greater one lives within you. When you're going through a hard time, you got to remind yourself Greater, the greater one lives in me. The greater one lives in you. And no matter what you're you're facing, no matter what's going on, the greater one lives on the inside of you. You have the keys to the kingdom. You have keys of authority. And you have the ability to be an overcomer and to walk out victoriously no matter what you go through. Now, the last time we brought the first part, and it was uh, part, the first key was remembering, was just remembering in Christ, who you are, what you have, remembering that you have all that you are, that you you have all that you need for life and godliness. Remembering the fact that Jesus Christ has already provided everything for you for life and godliness. So the question is not, um, what do I need to do to get? The question is, is is uh, have have you set your mind on what God already says is yours? So it's asking the right question. It's like, Lord, you've already provided it all, but. If I don't set my mind on what you've provided for, and if I don't remember what you've provided for, I don't understand it, or I've never been taught, then I may not be walking in the fullness, because you've provided everything that I need for life and godliness, and your word doesn't lie, amen? And that was 2 Peter 1.3. That was the first key. The second key, I'm just going to briefly go over this, the second key was to continually drink of his living water. Continually drink, and I brought you to John 4.4. You know, where Jesus said, whoever drinks of the water that I give shall never thirst, right? And and if you continually drink of the living water, your soul becomes like this well-watered fountain overflowing in Christ. And that's what we want. We want our life to be overflowing. Not just barely enough to get by. Not just barely enough, you know, for ourselves and maybe for somebody else. No, no, no. We want to live the overflow life for us and for others that are in our in our lives right or those that we meet so step number three the third point in three keys to walking in victory are you ready let your praise be in abundance you want to walk in victory do you want to hold on to what you have and gain more victory in life for you and for those that are you're tied to connected to let your praise be in abundance. Glory. Hallelujah. Psalm 34, 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's what Psalm 34, 1 says. And for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever you have in your heart in abundance, it's going to speak. And that verse is, is Matthew 12, 34. So those two together, I make a choice to always bless the Lord and his praise will continually be in my mouth. So therefore, out of the abundance of what is in my heart, my mouth is going to automatically speak. You want to know what a person is thinking? Watch how they speak, right? Just watch how they speak. You know, the word says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. As we think, that's Proverbs 23, 7, as, as a man thinks in his heart, that's actually who he is. Whatever I start to think about and ponder about and meditate and keep in the, that eventually is going to become a reflection of who I am because I'm thinking about it all the time. When we are thinking about the word of God, when we're thinking about the goodness of the Lord, when we're thinking about the high praises of God and we just can't stop praising him, what comes out is what's been in there, what's been in there for a while. That's what comes out, out of, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So we want to make sure that our mouth is speaking words of life. Our mouth is speaking words of victory. You want to walk in victory? Victory is yours in Jesus, in Jesus Christ. But the way to walk in victory, there are keys to walk in victory. And it's not about stressing. It's not about it's not about straining to try to walk in the blessing or, or being competitive and, you know, trying to beat someone to it. This is all, that's ridiculous. This is all man's ways. Uh, it's about knowing who you are as a son or a daughter of, of the Most High God. It's about knowing your identity in Christ, that you belong to the King of Kings. It's about knowing that there's always room at the table for you. It's about knowing that your father loves you with a crazy kind of love and you have not been forgotten, but as a matter of fact, you've been, you've been fashioned in his own image and you've been brought forth before the foundations of the world. Like it's about knowing who you really are in Christ. So, but letting your praise be in abundance, that mindset, no matter what's going on, I'm turning it, I'm going to praise the Lord. Oh yeah, but all these, I'm going to praise the Lord. Yeah, but what about all these problems? I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to thank you, Father. May, I may not be, thank you, Father, that this horrible thing happened. That's not the praise I'm referring to. Father, I thank you that though the situation is not the way I would like it to be, though the situation isn't great, Father, I praise you because you are the one that is able to take what is, seems to be a mess, but seems to be ashes, and make something beautiful out of it. Isaiah 61. He takes our ashes and he makes something beautiful out of them. He takes what's broken and he brings life. Amen. Yeah. Wherever we have the spirit of despair, he's going to bring and he's going to put on the garment of praise. You know, God is a good God and he wants you to walk in the miracles and in the blessings and in the victory that Jesus has already purchased for you. I believe that a believer most happiest, most balanced, uh, the most kind, the most victorious, uh, the most prosperous people on the earth. Because we've got the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and he's already overcome everything, everything. Even when things aren't going well, we still are victorious because it's a mindset. It's a mindset. So Psalm 35, 28. Now there are a lot of scriptures that talk about praise in the Bible, a lot. I've only chosen a few, but Psalm 35, 28 says, my tongue shall speak of your praise all day long. Your praise is a weapon. Your praise is a weapon to your enemy and it's victory to you. When you praise God, do you know what's happening? You are praising God. It's in obedience to God, of course, but it's, so it's a weapon. The enemy hates when you praise God. He can't stand when he sees a believer worshiping God with all their might, with everything that's within them, especially when you're in a difficult season and you say, I'm not going to look at that. I'm going to keep my eyes. I'm going to, I'm going to look at the one that is, you know, that loves me. I'm going to, I'm going to look at the one that is for me and not against me. My eyes will behold the glory of the Lord. I, I choose to look at him. I know there's this situation going on at home. I know there's this situation going on with my health or my finances or my children, but I choose to worship you. I choose to praise you father in and through it all, because I know that you can take this situation and turn it around, or you're going to change my heart, but I choose to worship you father. You know, when we do this, our praise is a weapon. It becomes a weapon against our enemy and it becomes victory for us. A weapon against the enemy and victory for us, but it doesn't stop there. Oh, it doesn't stop there. It also brings delight to the heart of the Father. 
when we make praise a weapon of ours, like we practice praise all the time, we live a lifestyle, we know this is the third key in, in the three keys of walking in victory, that we, we let praise be our lifestyle, Listen to this verse in Jeremiah 9, 24. It says, But let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and that he knows me. That he understands and that he knows me. That I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness and justice and righteousness on earth. For I delight in these things, says the Lord. So, let him who boasts boast in that he understands and knows me. Do you know that to know God is to encounter God? When you worship God, you're going to encounter God. To when you worship God, you're bringing his, you're, you're kind of lining up with the heart of the Father. You're having love encounters with the Lord and you're receiving revelation from him. You're receiving revelation. Those are those two scriptures that you can look, look up later. 2 Corinthians 3, 16 through 18. And 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12. God wants you to encounter him. When you worship God, why is it please the Father so much? Why does it delight his heart? Remember, it's warfare against your enemy. It's victory for you. But it's also, it's also you're delighting the heart of the Father. You are delighting the heart of the Father when you worship him in every situation. Because when you worship God in every situation, you are saying, Father, no matter what's going on, I choose to look at you. I choose to worship you. I choose to lavish you with my praise. I choose to know you even more through the situation. I choose to take all of my heartache, difficulties, and just lay them at your feet and then gaze upon the one who has never stopped gazing upon on me. You know, that delights his father, the father. That delights his heart. And some of you just need to get that in your spirit and say, wow, is that what I need to do? I've been trying, I've been striving. I've been trying to do this my way. I've been trying to work harder, memorize more scripture. Not that memorizing scripture is bad, but sometimes we can get into this work of the flesh and God is saying, just come and be with me. Just come and let me love you. Come and let me heal your heart. Come and be with me. It delights me when you sit and you are with me when you want to know me, when you, when you desire that revelation from me. It delights me when I see my children want to spend time with me, especially during a difficult situation. If you have children, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, or if you're married or you have a, a, you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, you want to be with that person, especially during a difficult time. How much more do you want to be with, with those that you, that you love, right? Those that are close to you, you know, your best friend or somebody when in a difficult time, who do you call? Who do you pick up when you pick up the phone? Who are you calling for? Someone that's close to you, someone that you know you want to be with and they actually delight and desire your presence as well. But this is what the Lord wants from us and it delights his heart. It delights him. Oh, he, that, that he understands that we understand and know him. I love the fact that the Lord says, I delight in these things. Jeremiah 924 let him who boasts boast of this that he understands and he knows me that we know him we can boast in the fact this is what the word says he wants us to boast in the fact that we know him and love him and praise him for everything that he does everything that he does even if it doesn't look like anything is happening i still praise him because that i know he's always at work our god is always doing something so and he loves the fact that we praise him he says i delight in these things declares the lord praise god glory hallelujah praise is that third weapon praise is that third key letting your pay, praise be in abundance psalm 146 6 says may the praises of god be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands the sword is the word of god let the praises of God be in your mouth. I'll tell you, you can't be in a battle 
and be defeated when you are in that battle and you are just praising God with everything that is within you. You are letting the word come forth. I thank you, Father, that no good thing will you withhold from those who walk uprightly. I thank you, Father God, that you are for me and not against me. I thank you, Father God, that you're a good, good daddy God, that all good things come from above the Father of heaven, Father of heavenly lights. I thank you, Father God, that you are victorious and greater are you that are, is in me than he that is in the world. I thank you that I already am an overcomer and that I can do all things through Christ. I thank you, Father, that you hear my prayers. I thank you, Father, that you answer my prayers. I thank you that every promise is yes and amen to me in this word. You know, you start to worship him and you start to praise him. You you change. Your situation may or may not change just yet, but you change. And when you change, let me tell you, church, everything changes. Give it time, but everything will change. One person changing causes, gives room for everything else to change. So you're the change agent and you're going to be the one to walk in victory. How do you walk in victory? By holding on to the word of God, by remembering the promises of God and remembering who you are and by praise. Let the praises of God be on your mouth and let that double-edged sword in your hands. Praise the Lord. My words are the overflow. Your words are the overflow of what's in your heart. Whatever is in your heart is going to overflow. And, you know, and we're going to boast in the Lord, our God. Psalm 103, Psalm 103, uh, verses 1 through 5. I'm going to turn there because here it talks about some of the benefits. Psalm 103, 1 through 5. Hallelujah. You know, it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. There we go. Forget not all of his benefits. Who forgives you of all your iniquities? Our God is a forgiving God. He forgives all of our iniquities. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter. It's forgiven. It's under the blood. Just bring it before the Lord and repent of it. Confess it as sin. And remember, when you confess it as sin, it is buried right at the bottom of the sea. The Lord says in this word that he actually, as far as the east is to the west, he puts it. He puts that sin as far as the east is to the west, bears it all the way to the bottom of the sea, never to be remembered again. This is the kind of God that we serve. This is the kind of God that's saying, you know, you're, that he's saying to you, you're victorious. He's saying to you, walk in your victory. And, you know, in Psalm 103, it says, we're to bless the Lord who forgives us of all of our iniquities, of all of our sins. That's a good God. He's for us. He's with us and he's not against us. And he goes on. Some of the, be the benefits, remember, forgetting all of his benefits. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Your youth is renewed like the eagles. Some of us just need to say, you know what? I am going to, my youth is, is being renewed like the eagles. Like I am walking, I'm, my life is redeemed from destruction and I'm crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies and I'm walking with my head held high. Don't drop your crown. You're wearing the crown of life. You're wearing the crown of life. In other words, don't let the enemy tell you lies that this is not true, that you've gone too far, you're not able, not capable, done too much, God can't forgive you, or you can't walk in victory because you have too much baggage. No, that's, that's, these are all lies, you know, and Psalm 68, 19 is just a companion scripture to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, I just read to you, it says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. And then we listed, we listed off some of the benefits, right? Forgiveness, healing, rede redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, satisfies your mouth with good things and renews your youth like the eagle. These are some of the benefits, right? But in Psalm 68, 19, it says, bless the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Ah, oh, bless the Lord. He daily loads you with benefits. Praise God. Oh, Lord, you're so good. I want to stop for a moment here and, and uh, 
let you know about a couple books that I've written. This one here, From Grief to Glory, this is a two-month devotional that will help you get out of any situation that you might be in if you're having a difficult time, if you are going through loss of any kind, death of any kind. Um, this, When I found myself in a place of lament, and the Lord was, he was, he was always there. He never left my side. He was my strong tower, still is. But what he did in me and through me during those years, uh, he brought me closer to him than I've ever been brought in the past, ever, and uh, transformed my life totally. And this book is a byproduct of it. When I pick up this book and I read it, and I still do, it's my copy. I've got it, uh, pages earmarked and highlighted and all. Um, I still am blessed by this work. And I was telling my husband this the other day. And, uh, and, and the reason that I can pick up this book and it still ministers to me is because truly the Holy Spirit wrote this book. Like, it's his words. He wrote it through me, but he wrote it. And when I read some of the words on here, you know, I remember where I was, but I remember the intensity of his, of his hand upon me when we were writing this book. And so it still ministers to me to this day. I encourage you to get a copy of this book. It's going to deepen your walk. It'll deepen your walk. It's a two-month devotional. Of course, you can read it a lot shorter than that if you wanted to because it's it's not a long book at all. And then uh, Devil Get Your Hands Off is the second book. And this book is a book on warfare. It's a book on strategies. It's a book on how to snatch your loved ones out of deception because the enemy has a well-laid-out plan to deceive, to destroy, and to take what's yours, what belongs to you, your family, your family that God has entrusted in you, your life, or those that you are a spiritual mother or a spiritual father for. They become your family. God has given keys in his word, and I've laid out six of them, six strategies to snatch your children out of deception. And uh, power of praise is one of them in this book. Power of um, authority, the, the power of surrender, the power of standing in the gap, the, the, the power of your, of your affirmation, the power of your decree. There are different strategies that I have laid out in this book that are going to help you to become that agent of change to help those individuals come out of darkness, come out of rebellion. And so this is a very handy tool. Now, both of these books can be found at my website, um, Kathy Coppola Ministries dot org. Kathy Coppola Ministries dot org. You can get a copy of these books there right online. You can go to the website. You can go to Amazon. You can go to HSBN and you can get either any of those places and you can get a copy of, of these books. You can also write to me and I'd love to hear from you. I love to hear the, how, how, how you're doing and how the messages are, are helping you, like how you're being blessed by the messages. I love to hear. And, uh, so if you want to write, um, then you can write to Kathy Coppola International Ministries, P.O. Box 2923, Mission Viejo, California, 92690. If you prefer to write, you can also just go right to my website and you can just email me, you know, and, and uh, you can, we can correspond that way as well. But the three keys, you know, um, to walking in your victory is, you know, remembering who you are in Christ and remembering that you have all that you need for life and godliness. You know, the second one was staying in the word and letting the living water saturate your soul so that you become this well water, your heart, your soul becomes this well watered garden. And it's just overflowing to everyone and to anyone because you're so full of the word of God. And then point three, letting your praise be in abundance. Don't just barely praise. Let it be in abundance. When your praise is in abundance, you will see your life transforms. It changes. It changes because your perspective changes. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks be to God. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You're victorious. You want to walk in your victory? Three keys to walking in your victory. Remember that because of Christ, you are victorious. Praise be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So are you already victorious? Are you already a, a victor in Christ? Are you going to maintain and are you going to walk holding on to your victory? Oh, yes, you are in Jesus' name. And 2 Corinthians 2, 14 says this, but thanks be to God who always, always leads us triumphantly as captives in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. He always leads us triumphantly as captives in Christ so that you and I will spread that fragrance of Christ everywhere we go. The fragrance of Christ. Hallelujah. Everywhere we go. Praise you, Jesus. 
Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for all that you have done. You're good. You're always good. God is always good. And, you know, I don't know what some of the things you're dealing with, but I do know that everyone deals with things. I do know that for a fact. I know that his word doesn't return void. I know that, that God is wanting to step into your situation. Will you give him time and space? And will you and will you partner with God? And, and as you partner with God and you say, Lord, you know, there are keys to my victory that I believe you want me to walk in. There are keys for me to hang on to the truth. And these keys, I'm going to own them. I'm not just going to understand them intellectually. I want to own them. Like it has to be part of my everyday walk. It has to be part of my soul, part of my spirit, man. It has to be part of my makeup. So Father, teach me how to own these principles and how to really run with them, how to run with them. Because I believe this is the delight of the Father's heart for you, that you take this word and you take every word and you say father it's mine i'm adhering to the word of god praise you jesus i've got a couple more scriptures for you and and this one is found in isaiah 44 3. you know i believe the word is strong and it's powerful and we've got to get the scriptures always before our eyes and get them in our spirit man it says i will pour water on him who is thirsty are you thirsty because the word says i will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground when you are in those seasons where you feel dry you know lots have come against you and you feel dry the lord says he's going to pour floods on the dry ground i will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessings on your offspring so that means that when you pursue god you're doing this for an added investment for your own children, your offspring, your descendants. It says, I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. See, this is not about just you, me, 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 all I can achieve, all I can get, 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 you know, this is not a self-centered thing. This, the blessings of God are going to overtake you, but the blessings of God are not just so you can feel good, but it's so you can bless other people. It's so that you can edify people. It's so that you can be the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. He wants you to expand the kingdom of God. And he's, he blesses us in order to do that. But the, the blessing is so that we, not only do we receive, but we bless others with it. Amen. He is so good. I'm going to pray for you. Father, I thank you for all that you have done. I thank you, Father God, that those that are listening right now, I decree that there's no weapon at all that has been formed against them that's going to prosper. Father, they're victorious in Christ. We, we've already read it in your word. And so, Father, because they're victorious in Christ and the enemy schemes and comes against them, I rebuke the enemy's plan against them and I speak life, abundant life, in them right now in the name of Jesus. I decree that they are walking in accordance with your word and they're going to walk fulfilling the desires that you've placed in them and they are victorious. Victorious in Christ. You're victorious in Christ. Now go forth and hold on to these three keys and own them and watch how God will work and move in your life. God bless you all. Have an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.